ever get that like you know looking back on your school days and thinking wow I could have like done so much more with all that time yeah totally that that resonates with a lot of people I think you know what if you could learn twice as much maybe even more in just two hours a day really flip the script huh totally yeah that's what we're diving into today it's called uh, two-hour learning interesting yeah based on what you sent over uh, a YouTube video with Mackenzie Price he's the co-founder of Alpha School and then a Fox News report about their methods and then info from the Alpha School website like the basic idea is students focus on academics for just two hours a day okay I'm intrigued and apparently they're outperforming kids in traditional schools like way outperforming them. so three times the academic time but learning less? Yeah, it's wild, right? So, like, how does this work? What are the core parts of this model and what kind of results are they getting? Big questions. Huge. And, like, what does this all mean for how we think about education in general? Right, right. We're going to unpack all that in this deep dive, look closely at these accelerated learning claims, see the evidence, understand how it works. Exactly. Clear, insightful picture. Yeah, you know, without getting too bogged down. Avoid the jargon overload. I like it. Okay, so two-hour learning concept. Okay. Sounds simple, right? Two hours a day of just focused academic time. Simple in theory, but it's what happens in those two hours and the rest of the day that's potentially groundbreaking. Like, is quality of learning time more important than quantity? Right. Price, in that YouTube video, he says student motivation is like 90% of the solution, and then ed tech is the other 10%. 90%, that's a huge emphasis on intrinsic drive. So right. the AI tutor and the apps, they're just tools to support that motivation. Yeah, and instead of like teachers leading the class, they have these like guides. Guides, interesting. Yeah. So more mentors than instructors. Yeah, exactly. Like less about lecturing, more about supporting, you know, helping the students kind of direct their own learning. So it's about fostering that internal motivation, that curiosity, I like that. Yeah, and the rest of the day is spent on workshops, building life skills. Life skills. Yeah, like leadership, teamwork, public speaking, even financial literacy and entrepreneurship. Wow, okay, that's that's a much broader view of what education should be. So like when you say leadership and entrepreneurship, we're talking like projects, simulations, group activities, I would assume so, yeah. Making it practical, hands-on. Yeah. Price mentions this model works well for like 80 to 90 percent of their students. Okay, so not a universal solution, but pretty darn effective. Right. Okay, let's talk results. Alpha School says they want their students learning twice as much in two hours as they would in six hours of traditional school. Bold claim. Big time. And to back it up, they use standardized test data. Makes sense. A way to compare apples to apples, so to speak. Exactly. So K through eight, they mainly use the MAP test. And for high school, it's SAT and AP exams. Okay. Familiar territory. Right. And their MAP results from last school year, 2023-24, are crazy good. Like, most of their classes were in the top 1% nationwide in every subject. Top 1% across the board. That's impressive. It is, right. And the Fox News report says generally in the top 2%, so, you know, a little different. Still, like... Still incredibly high. Yeah. So this two times learning... How do they even measure that? It's all about the growth data from those MAP tests. The growth, meaning how much they improve over time, not just their score at a single point. Yeah, so say a fifth grader at the 50th percentile usually grows by like four points in a year on the MAP. At Alpha, they're aiming for eight points of growth for that same kid. Doubling the rate of progress, got it. And they have these benchmarks for different grades and performance levels. They even shared specific examples like the average student is showing a little over two times the expected growth. That's already remarkable. But their top students is even more dramatic. The top 23%, they average 2.6 times the normal learning speed, and the top 20% were close to four times faster. Wow, so for some kids, this model is really unlocking something special. Yeah, right. And then there's this idea of knowledge grade level. They use the MAP test to figure out where a student's understanding is at, and then place them in the highest grade level where they're still scoring in the top 10% nationally. So no more being held back by age or grade level. If you're ready for more advanced material, you get it. Yeah, and for students who are behind, it seems to work really well. They mentioned a group of seven boys, two years behind, and they caught up 4.6 times faster, finished two grade levels in six months. That's incredible. It's like they're making up for lost time at warp speed. Totally. And then their Brownsville, Texas campus, serving a lower socioeconomic community, their students are learning 2.1 times faster than the national average. 
Interesting. So even in a context where students might face more systemic challenges, this model is showing significant gains. Yeah, and Price emphasizes the AI tutor, like it doesn't have biases. Right, it's just focused on the student's mastery of the material, no preconceived notions about what they can or can't do. And get this, even their kindergartners are thriving. Kindergartners, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, me neither. But almost all of them ended up in the top 1% nationally on their MAP scores, both for knowledge and learning speed. That's wild challenges and assumptions about what young children are capable of learning. Totally. And it's not just the little kids. Their high school results are great, too. Let's hear it. Average SAT score of 1470. That's well above the national average. And 90% of them score a 4 or 5 on their AP exams. Their first graduating class got into some top colleges. Like which ones? Stanford, Vanderbilt, USC, even international schools. Okay, they're not messing around. These are some seriously competitive institutions. Right, and they had national merit scholars too. So it's translating to success beyond alpha school as well. Yeah, and remember, all this is happening with an average of less than two hours of academic work per day. It really begs the question, how much of the traditional school day is truly efficient learning time? Right. Okay, so let's dig into the why and the how. They say it took 10 years to develop this model. A decade. That suggests a lot of trial and error, refinement. Yeah, they focused on, like, results, not polish. Substance over style, makes sense. And they talk a lot about learning science research. They mentioned Benjamin Bloom's Two Sigma problem. Oh yes, Bloom's work was groundbreaking. For those who might not know, it basically showed that students who receive one-on-one -on -one tutoring outperform those in traditional classrooms by a huge margin. Yeah, like two standard deviations, huge but obviously individualized tutoring for everyone isn't really practical. Exactly. The challenge is how to scale that kind of personalized learning. And that's where they say the AI comes in. They argue that to achieve these kinds of results, you pretty much have to move away from the traditional classroom model. Because it inherently limits personalization. Yeah, like one teacher can only do so much with 30 different students all at different levels. Yeah, it's a logistical nightmare. So their first learning science example is individualized tutoring and learning plans. They point out that classrooms now, especially after the pandemic, have kids with such a wide range of prior knowledge. Yeah, making it almost impossible for a single teacher to effectively address all those individual needs. Right. So an AI tutor can step in and provide that personalized experience. Like they gave an example of a new eighth grader who started at a fifth grade level based on her AI assessment. Okay. And because she was working at her own pace with a tailored plan, she caught up and was ready for high school by the end of the year. So the AI is acting like a personalized tutor, constantly assessing, adjusting the difficulty, providing targeted support. Fascinating. Right. It's like um, always meeting the student exactly where they are. And that's something a human teacher with the best intentions can only do to a limited extent. Right, right. Okay, the second principle is mastery learning. Basically, making sure students really understand the basics before moving on. Fundamental, right. Like, you can't build a house on a shaky foundation. Exactly. But traditional schools often have to move at a set pace, even if some kids aren't ready. Yeah. Curriculum coverage often trumps genuine understanding. But the AI lets students take as much time as they need on each concept. Okay. Like they gave the example of division. You need to understand division to get fractions. Absolutely. So if the student's division is weak, the AI will make sure they master that before moving on to fractions. Smart. It addresses a major weakness of the time-based curriculum. Okay, let's get into the actual day-to-day. -day. They compared, you know, the time spent in regular school, mm. 180 days, an hour a day, plus homework. Okay, so we're talking hundreds of hours, potentially. Yeah, versus their own data. Like in third grade language arts, there are about 100 lessons and students average like 16 minutes per lesson. Okay. That's about 40 hours total for the whole year. Way less. A huge difference. And they do acknowledge that not all students will move at the same pace. Right. Some might need more time, mm. nice distractions. Real life, right. Exactly. So they have this AI struggle detector. Like if a student's having a tough time, it'll automatically give them easier lessons. Okay. And they also have this... Um, waste meter. A waste meter. Yeah, it tracks like when a student is um, not really engaged. <laughs> okay, so maybe clicking randomly, getting answers wrong, not asking for help, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So the guys and parents can step in. Keep the kids on track. Makes sense. And obviously, if parents aren't 
like on board with this whole approach, it's not going to work as well. Right. Buy-in is important. It's a pretty different philosophy from traditional schooling. Yeah. So their daily schedule, they use the Pomodoro technique. You familiar with that? I am. Short bursts of focused work with breaks in between. Yeah. So four 25-minute sessions, right. math, science, or social science, and language writing, reading, plus 20 minutes for like extra math practice and learning strategies. So a structured but relatively short academic day. And they have this dash dashboard. It's very visual, like a Jenga tower showing progress. Daily rings that light up when they meet their goals. Gamifying the experience. Totally. Yeah. Keeps it engaging. And the apps themselves, they're adaptive. Okay. Like they adjust to the student's level. They, They've got audio, video, different learning styles. Makes it accessible. And the AI tutor is always there to help. Always monitoring, guiding. Okay. And transparency with parents is huge. Mm -hmm. They provide tons of data. They call it a CAT scan of the child's knowledge. A SAT scan. Wow. Okay. That's a pretty vivid analogy. It's this like daily updated learning plan. And what's included in this plan? Everything their age grade, knowledge grade, how many lessons they've done, how many are left, percentage complete, how many weeks to finish at their current pace. Wow, that's granular. Yeah, and also if they did an extra hour a day, yeah. their standardized test results, mastery test results, and even learning efficiency stuff. Like what? Like how many minutes a day on each subject, their accuracy and that waste meter thing. So parents have a really detailed picture of their child's progress and how they're actually using their time. Yeah, more insight than you'd ever get from a traditional report card. That's for sure. So all this frees up time for those life skills workshops. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about you, our listener, who wants to learn effectively without feeling overwhelmed, this model is all about efficiency and a well-rounded education. It's not just about academics. It's about preparing for the real world. Right. And it addresses some of the problems with traditional school, like... The Fox News article quotes a student who says her friends in regular schools are super stressed because of homework. Yeah, burnout is a real issue. And this model aims to avoid that. Okay, so to sum it up, two-hour learning, personalized learning powered by AI, mastery-based, focused on student motivation, and they're claiming huge learning gains in way less time. It's a bold experiment, but the results they're reporting are certainly compelling. And for you, our listener, this could change how you think about learning, not just for kids, but for anyone. Like, could this be a more efficient, more engaging way to learn anything? It raises some really interesting questions. So here's a final thought. Given these results, the faster learning and the time for life skills, what other assumptions about education should we be questioning? Is the traditional model really the best way to learn in today's world? It's definitely worth considering. Maybe it's time to rethink some of those long-held beliefs. If you're intrigued, check out the Alpha School website or search for two-hour learning online. It's an exciting area to watch. Agreed. Thanks for this deep dive. It's been fascinating. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. This is definitely a conversation we need to keep having.